Hi there, another multimeter on the bench for a review. This one comes from Kai Reads and it's the KM200S. I did not pay for it so I mark it as a promotion but as you know that doesn't stop me from giving you an unbiased review. The rear of the box indicates that this will be a fairly easy run as we have just DC and AC volts resistance continuity and NCV. In the box we have a manual, a pair of leads, a pack with two triple A's, I like that, no worries about charging safety, and finally the tiny meter itself which is quite cute. Just three buttons and two sockets. The first challenge is to add batteries. For that the meter has to be taken out of its protective holster which in good Kaiwitz tradition is very stiff and so not the easiest of tasks. But from experience it gets easier eventually because the holster softens a bit the more often you do it. With the holster removed a single screw holds the lid of the battery compartment. It goes into a metal threaded insert which is nice but the screw itself is not held captive in the lid and can get lost easily. Inside we have space for two triple A's. The leads are relatively stiff PVC plastic and the probes themselves are quite short kind of matching the size of the meter. Turning the power on and the meter goes into auto. As expected it has no problems in testing a 9 volt battery. What if I shorten the leads, does it do continuity? It does but that took a long time. As with most smart multimeters auto mode is hopeless when trying to measure small voltages. Here I use a Fluke 101 for comparison, a good match in size but the Fluke is not smart and has way more functions. The KM200S in auto mode in parallel it just reports the resistance. As I increase the voltage the resistance readings get higher. Until at 600 millivolts the KM200S finally realizes that it's supposed to measure voltages and switches to show millivolts instead of ohms. This is a typical behavior of smart meters and to be fair the specs in the manual say DC volts in auto mode works only from 0.8 volts onwards. Of course you can avoid the problem by pressing mode to turn smart off and go manually into DC volts. By the way the tiny auto you see on the display refers to auto ranging not the auto smart mode. There is no manual ranging. Another press gets you to AC volts followed by resistance and then continuity and finally non-contact voltage or NCV and back to auto. To cover the rest of the functions short presses on hold just does the usual freezing of the current displayed value. A long press turns the backlight on or off. In any case it turns off after 2 minutes automatically. A long press on mode turns a rather weak torchlight on. Again it turns off after 2 minutes. By manually selecting DC volts I ran an accuracy test of the KM200S up to 100 volts. Its spec for DC volts is plus minus 1% plus 5 digits and it comfortably meets that even at the single digits millivolts. No problems here. I repeated the test for AC volts. Strangely the specs for AC volts are better than for DC volts. I wondered if these two are swapped in the documentation but Kaiwitz doesn't think so. So let's go with the stated accuracy. The KM200S is doing ok here. On the high side only the last value of almost 600 volts is out of spec. But if you apply the 3 digit part of the spec and subtract 3 from the displayed volts it's only a tad over 0.8%. On the low side Doing tiny AC volts with RMS is not an easy job and the red marked value would be in spec if you applied the 3 digit part and added 2 digits. But 8 millivolts and below resulted in just 0 on the display, mostly because of the RMS conversion. There is hardly any true RMS multimeter, even expensive ones that can measure single digit AC millivolts. The recent exception is the Tooltop ET853C. All in all given its price the KM200S does a fair job on AC volts and I have no complaints. I measured the bandwidth from 10Hz onwards and the 3dB limit was at 3kHz so the KM200S is better than its spec in both directions. 
Auto ranging in resistance mode is very fast, even in smart mode. That is a real joy to use. For 50 ohms or lower, the meter goes into continuity mode. It still shows the resistance, but it also beeps. To avoid being beeped at, you have to go manually into resistance mode. But in continuity mode, we want beeping and fast. I switched manually to continuity in the hope that this improves the speed comparing to doing it in auto mode as we saw at the beginning. Not so. This must be the slowest continuity mode I've ever experienced. Very often the performance in continuity mode is marred by the cheap probes that are delivered with the meters and using quality probes like for example these Pomona ones usually fixes the problem. Not here. Continuity is as slow as before. This is just about tolerable if all you do is check the occasional fuse. NCV mode is not part of the smart set and must be selected manually with a mode switch. In my tests it worked quite well. I must admit that I'm quite skeptical about the usefulness of all NCV, not just the KM200S. Because a beep may tell you there is high voltage somewhere in the area, but the absence of a beep does not mean there is no dangerous voltage present. Opening the meter requires again stripping off the holster. There are four self-tappers, one in each corner. When these are out, the meter comes apart easily. Despite its small overall size, the meter is very empty. Lots of air at the bottom. The brain is a single chip which has sadly no identification markings. Because there is no current mode, there is no need for bulky fuses or shunt resistors. But voltage transients could happen, yet apart from a two transistor clamping circuit Q4 and Q5, there seems to be no other protection. At least the SMD resistors at the input are in series to improve the overall voltage rating. As a comparison, the Fluke 101 shows the other extreme in protection for a meter with no current measurements. They put everything and the kitchen sink in it. A fusible resistor, a PTC and two MOFs not to mention tracking slots, oh well. The manual of the KM200S claims a 10 meg input resistance, but the number and value of the resistors on the PCB prompted me to have a quick check and measure it. 304k in DC volts, and the same for AC volts, a typical value for smart meters about the same as an analog meter in the 10 volt range. Here is the spec page of the otherwise not bad manual that came with the meter. I highlighted the odd sections. Kaiweeds acknowledges that the 10 meg input resistance is an error and are busy correcting the manual. I also asked them if the accuracy claims for DC volts and AC volts were accidentally swapped, but they say no and issue the explanation shown here. Maybe what they're trying to say is it's already like that in the datasheet of the chip used. I suppose that's possible. In any case it's not a big issue and the meter measures DC and AC volts quite ok as I have shown. Last thing to test is battery life. I power the meter for my bench power supply and the yellow meter is showing the voltage while the red one is showing the current. It's about 1.7 milliamps, which is not too bad. Measuring continuity and with the beeper going it's now almost 29 milliamps. Using the backlight brings the consumption to almost 6 milliamps, while the torch by itself just brings it to about 5 milliamps. I started a timer and stopped using the meter to see how long the automatic power off or APO will last and what the current after APO will be. You get a warning at about 14 and a half minutes and one minute later the meter turns off. and draws about 9 microamps. Incidentally, this is exactly the same current draw you get when you manually turn the meter off. It's not a lot of current. I wouldn't worry about discharged batteries, but instead about leaking ones. So can you use rechargeable batteries instead, which seem to be more resistant to leakage? Instead of 1.5 volts, rechargeable batteries have a nominal cell voltage of 1.2 volts. To fully utilize rechargeable batteries, the meter should ideally show a low bat symbol at 2.4 volts or less. There it is, sadly, at just a tad under 2.6 volts. At this value, your rechargeable batteries will still have most of their charge left. 
At least it shows the correct values of the 10K resistor the KM200S is measuring during that test. And continuing to lower the voltage, the meter still works correctly down to about 2.15 volts and simply turns off at 2.12. This means you can ignore the low battery indicator and train your rechargeable batteries. The only issue with that is that the meter will finally shut down without any warning. The KM200S is not a meter I would use in electronics. It lacks current mode and the smart functions get in the way of measuring low voltages and cause rather low input resistance. On the other hand, if all you're doing is checking voltages, not millivolts, and occasionally continuity of cable and fuses, the KM200S would definitely be suitable, even with a slow continuity test. The auto mode and lack of current means even someone who has never used the multimeter before can use it successfully and without fear of making a mistake. So maybe something for the kitchen drawer, the garage or glove compartment. Thanks to Kai Weeds for sending it in and I'll leave a link where you can get it in the description. If you like my videos, don't forget to like and subscribe and maybe consider becoming a Patreon. That would really help this channel. The link's in the description. Thanks for watching.